Another year, another sweat title for them Alabama State Hornets. We are now winners of five straight SWAC championships as we once again beat the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils for the second consecutive year in the SWAC championship game in Detroit, Michigan. And with that being said, it's Selection Sunday. So let's look at the BCS rankings. Oregon State comes in at 14, UC Virginia, Georgia, Iowa, and Alabama ranking out 15 to 10. Now we go to the top 10, UC Michigan, UC Georgia Tech, San Jose State, USC, Florida, Ohio State, Alabama State, and look who's the number one team in the country, people, the LSU Tigers. With that win over the Florida Gators in Atlanta, they take the number one spot as well as the SEC championship game. So there goes your championship game right there in the desert. We're taking on the LSU Tigers for that crystal ball down there in Tempe, Arizona on January 3rd, 2011. Now, as you know, in real life, the 2010 season, this was the year that the Auburn Tigers won the national championship led by Cam Newton. So here goes another first. For the first time in this series, we have a winner of Office Alignment of the Year, and that is our senior left tackle, Brandon Ross, number 61, right there. He led the nation in pancakes, also allowing three sacks on the season. Well, all season, as a matter of fact. This man set the tone on the left side of the line all year. He leads the nation in pancakes. We got the majority of our rushing yards on the left side because of him and, of course, because of Bo Drew. Brandon Ross hopefully will pop up in Madden. We expect him to be at least a third-round pick, maybe, but we'll see. But he did an excellent job for us on the left side of the line. So we have another Belitnikoff Award winner coming out of Alabama State back-to-back -back years for the school. Don Robbie Smith is your Belitnikoff Award winner this season for them Alabama State Hornets. Now Don Robbie leads the nation in receiving yards and he now leads the nation in receiving touchdowns. He now has what? I believe it's 19 going into this national championship game. You see the numbers right there. 1,626 yards receiving. That is number one in the country along with 19 touchdown catches. This one right here, though, for Oregon State. This was nuts right here. Look at that stiff arm right there. Then he's going to make a man miss right there. I forgot, though. He has 21 total touchdowns right now. He got two rushing touchdowns, and the other 19, of course, are in the air. Now, Don Robbie has had a great season, and he's looking for touchdown catch number 20 when we go up against those LSU Tigers in just a few weeks. But that's going to be a challenge. So let's look at the rest of the HBCU world as far as the bowl games. Tennessee State is going to New Orleans to take on Memphis. Remember, Delaware State won the MEAC, but they didn't win enough games to be bowl eligible. Southern's going to Mobile to take on the Houston Cougars of, U of uh, Conference USA, that is. Now, you know, in real life, they're not in Conference USA anymore. They're in the AAC. Eventually, we'll be in the Big 12. And then down in Detroit, well, up in Detroit, you got the Motor City Bowl. Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions finally reach a bowl game. And they're taking on the Wisconsin Badgers of the Big 10. So as we scroll down the rest of this list, let's talk about the real-life Alabama State Hornets. What did y'all think of the MEAC Swag Challenge out there in Atlanta? I was going to go to that game, but I had to go to Germany for some reason. But I did have a good time out there, though. But anyway, what I saw so far, I like the team wasn't bad, but they have discipline problems, on-field discipline problems, that is. The last two drives of the first half where they had the three straight penalties and then they had the block punt, and then the following drive, they turned the ball over. It just, that was just a mess right there. That was an ugly end to that first half, too. But other than that, I do like Demetrius Davis, and it does show how much talent was wasted by Gus Malzahn while he was the head coach at Auburn. So you see Don Robbie, he won SWAC Offensive Player of the Week with the five receptions, two touchdowns, 133 yards. Now it's one week later. We have two players going up the Madison Square in New York City. Don Robbie Smith and Trey Tyler. The Trey Tyler and Don Robbie Smith connection has been the most dangerous HBCU connection since the days of Willie Satellite Toten 
and Jerry Rice back in 1984. It's one week later now, and we're up in Times Square in New York City. The two Hornets are in place up there in Madison Square Garden, wherever the hell they have this presentation at. And they're looking to see whose name is going to be called to take on the Heisman Trophy. Let's tune in live right now, baby. Let's get it. I'm Brad Nessler, and I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight in New York City for the presentation of the Heisman Trophy. It's an honor to present this award, which goes to the best college football player in the country. This young man will become a part of NCAA football history. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Heisman Trophy. Congratulations. Now, when we recruited this cat, he was a two-star from Hartsell, Alabama. When he got to the campus of Alabama State, we decided to redshirt him. We felt he wasn't ready. But look at this right here. Look at the first place votes. It was not even close. Trey Tyler and Don Robbie Smith each had triple-digit first place votes. Everybody else was under 62. That is nuts. What a season for Don Robbie Smith, the Belitnikoff Award winner and the Heisman Trophy winner. That man was absolutely crazy this season. I low-key think he was better than uh, Kevin Scott doing his two years at Alabama State. And I definitely think he was way better than big play swag Tim Brown. But anyway, as you see the rest of the first team All-Americans, you see Brandon Ross making it. Of course he made it. He was voted best offensive lineman of the year. But back to the Alabama State Hornets in real life. Demetrius Davis from Houston, Texas. You see why so many people at Auburn wanted him to get a shot to play. The man is really good. And the scary part is he's just a freshman. Just imagine what he's going to be like by his junior season. So what did y'all think of the game, man? I did like the defense. The defense did play stellar. Thought they should have had some more turnovers, though. They should have had at least four or five turnovers in that game. But for the most part, like I said earlier, discipline needs to be cleaned up as far as on the field. I'm pretty sure Eddie Robinson Jr. is keeping them cats in check off the field. I ain't worried about that. But then let's talk about the FAMU Rattlers and the North Carolina Tar Heel game. Now, that game was crazy before it started. So there was rumors going around. I got this from Sweat and the Fool, by the way. There was rumors going around that uh, they was going to cancel the game because they had 26 players, FAMU that is, the FAMU Rattlers had 26 players that were considered ineligible. I have no idea why, but they went up there to Chapel Hill with 25 players. Now, despite Florida A&M only playing with 25 players, I didn't think they looked that bad, man. I do like the quarterback. I saw some potential there. That's why I can't wait for the game this coming Sunday against Jackson State. They're going to have everybody back. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be a competitive game. Well, I'm hoping it'll be a competitive game. But let's see what happens, man. Like, Jackson State ain't no pushover, of course. Everybody's expecting them to repeat as SWAT champions. But uh, let's see what happens. So let's go over to the MAC team. You saw the All-Americans earlier. Look at it. All over the board. Even Henry Ortiz was named as a first-team All-Swag player. 
Even though he kept dropping the ball, we're going to have to work on that on the offseason. Because I do plan on putting the majority of my points into training and take some points off recruiting. I might take some more points off the, uh, the discipline side. I mean, I don't know what the team's going to look like for season seven, but I do think that we're going to be missing Don Robbie Smith. And I do think that the big L, Leon Henderson, might dip out on us. Leon Henderson didn't have a bad season this year. He had over 1,500 yards rushing, along with like 21 touchdowns. But I know if they do leave, they probably won't pop up on Madden. Their ratings are not high enough. It's in the mid-80s. Another pair of players that might leave are what? Blake Clayton, who's right there. He's also named First Team All-American. And also Brad Anderson might leave. Brad Anderson's in the 90s right now. And then Blake Clayton's like a 92. I would like for them to come back. But if they want to leave, it is what it is. We'll just let them leave. I want to reflect what it's going to be like in real life. But I want these cats to pop up in Madden too. But if they don't, ah, uh, well, it is what it is. So you see Ryan Thompson. I was actually surprised at this. 1,200 yards receiving. Nine touchdowns. But he's a second team all sweat player. He's not getting any respect right now. But he's doing such a great job for us in the slot. We might have to put him on the outside next season. So as you know in real life, this coming up weekend is the start of everybody. Zero week is come and gone. So Alabama State is taking on the Miles College Golden Bears. In the Labor Day Classic here in Montgomery, pretty much a home opener for the Hornets. It's going to be a tough one. They should, they should win it. They haven't had no problems with Miles before. Mainly the problem for Alabama State has been offense. And I think it's going to be different this year, especially with the player Demetrius Davis. And what he brings for not only his arm, but his legs. I do like Merritt. Merritt be running angry. He don't just run hard, he runs angry. And I really like that in the running back. But, uh, but yeah, man, but it should be an interesting game. I do think that Davis will ball out and, and the team gets even better. So as you see the rest of the all swag team, let's go over here to the MEAC. You're going to see a good bit of Delaware State players and a good bit of Tennessee State players. Delaware State was an actual surprise in the video game, that is. I'm not talking about in real life. They actually snuck up and took the MEAC title while Tennessee State, despite the fact that they didn't win the conference, is going to be the team that plays in the bowl game. Because remember, Delaware State, despite them not winning, well, despite them winning the conference, they only had five wins. And you need six wins in college football to go to a bowl game. With the exception, I know in real life there was the exception of some teams that went to bowl games that were like five and six. I remember UCLA doing that one time and they lost in that bowl game. I think it was, what, what was it? It was some bowl game in San Francisco. I forgot what it was called. But anyway, as you see the rest of this list, let's continue talking about HBCU football games going on this weekend in real life. So I forgot. The Red Tail Classic will be taking place Sunday in Montgomery. I believe that is the Tuskegee Golden Tigers and the Fort Valley State. I forgot what their mascot was. But they will be playing each other in Montgomery. I remember watching that game last year while I was out in Japan. And Tuskegee's offense was an absolute mess. Like Fort Valley State put them in a split. Let's see what other game is going on this weekend as far as the HBCUs. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I think I covered the ones that I really wanted to watch, though. I will be on the lookout for the other ones. But I can't wait, man. College football is back. We got week one coming in. On a side note, the Nebraska Cornhuskers might end up firing Scott Frost, man. I don't think he's the guy for that job. I doubt if they do fire him though because he's a campus legend and all. But that program is an absolute mess right now. They need to make a, a decision quick on him. But they better realize he's not the guy for the job. He should have stayed his ass down there in Central Florida if we're being real. But anyway, thank you for watching. Next video we're going to start the bowl games and we're going to cover all the HBCU schools in the bowl game. Peace.